Greetings everyone, I am Lotus Prince, and for this let's play we are going to tackle the Journeyman Project Pegasus Prime. This is a Patreon requested let's play, so it is a viewer's choice. What is this game? Well, we work for some temporal cosmic institution which monitors the space-time continuum and looks out for flaws or anomalies in it. Good thing too, because it looks like humanity is just on the verge of entering the grander scheme of things in terms of universal interactions, alien contact, all that good stuff, or are we? You see, somebody intends to prevent that from happening in multiple ways across multiple locations and multiple times. We have to prevent this thing, these things, from happening. Do we have what it takes to do so? Well, if we don't, I suppose we could always go back in time and try, try again. We'll get it right at some point. Let's go crazy. Greetings, everyone. We are now at the stream portion of the Let's Play, the post-intro video section. Don't worry, that's totally going to be there. Welcome to the Journeyman Project. Pegasus Prime, the epic time travel adventure begins. Can you believe this? This is a game from, I think, the 90s, and then it didn't get a proper PC release until, I, I think it said something like, like 2012. Oh, if I let this sit, it takes me to a movie, but I think we're going to get that when we start anyway. Why don't we go ahead and get ready for our little adventure? How does that sound? Yeah, and yeah, Winterburn, if games this old have customizable controls, new games have no excuse. Look at this 90s-ass title screen. Look at this. I didn't know what the game would look like when I saw this menu. Like, radical 90s. And the game does not look anything like this. But yeah, this game has customizable controls. Why don't we see what the actual game is? Hello there, Neko Green Dragon. Welcome to the stream. We're taking a look at the symbiotry or symbiotry of peaceful beings. What a pleasant location. Hello there, Mulry101. Welcome to the stream. You wish the original game was on GOG? What, what do you mean, like the original version of this game, I guess? Because I think it did go through some updates. Oh no! But I, the version I'm playing right now is on GOG. Good morning, I'm Johnny Ego, and you're listening to the mellow sounds of WKIM Too Big in Florida. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't think we have subtitles. Hey, Sleeping Beauty. Don't tell me you overslept. Whoa, you look awful. Did you have another one of those nightmares? You know, you really should talk to the doc about that. Anyway, this is just a friendly reminder that uh, you're supposed to relieve me at 0700. Remember, it was your idea to draw straws and you drew the short one. So, you get to hold down the fort while the rest of us go and watch the Sirolan delegate procession. Look, you always wanted to be the Lone Ranger. Now, get down here on time for a change and I'll let you watch my odd man when I come back. See you later. <laughs> Wake up. Wake up. Thanks, exposition lady. Good morning, Agent 5. It seems that you have slept with your neuroocular prosthesis on again. Your monocle needs recalibration. Stand by. The energy level warning light is operational. The energy level counter is at 100%. Ooh. Scrolling through the inventory control <clears throat> panel. You currently have no inventory items. 
scrolling through the biochip display panel. You have the AI biochip installed. Initiating self-diagnosis of onboard artificial intelligence. AI unit is fully operational. Agent 5, recommend you set an electrostatic shock reminder so this repeated morning recalibration routine does not continue. <laughs> Sorry, geez. So welcome to the super pleasant music as I wake up in bed. Uh, and yeah, Neko Green, Green Dragon, these always have the best voice acting. It's not even, or the best acting. Wait till you see my boss. He's like my favorite character in the game, except for maybe the the antagonist. Anyway, so we have to get to work. Oh my goodness, we, we gotta hurry. So while I'm here though, isn't there, like I could turn around? I know there was something I could clip, maybe it was, no. I could have sworn there was something that I could specifically. Agent five. You are due for your shift at the Temporal Security Annex. Recommend departure soon. I know, but I thought there was something that I could like... Yeah, if I go back down here, can I click somewhere around here? Oh, there it is. The effects are great. A micro slice. Do we want to do the Easter egg stuff or 100%? I was going for 100%, but if there's Easter egg stuff, I'm all for it because I don't think I know about that. Isn't this great? Well, this is awesome. But enough of this. That's just awesome. I could activate my enviro chamber and enter the Velt and then die. I mean, never mind, wrong story. Uh, Winterburn, the settings give you fifth element vibes. Yeah, I, I get that. Uh, let's actually get out now. I'm facing east. I appreciate the compass, by the way. It's like Kingsfield. I don't have a map, but I know where I'm going. And I walk in, like, I don't freely move. I walk on tiles, which is actually useful. I think this is what we're looking... No? Oh, hello. I can click that thing, but there was something else I wanted to get. Maybe it was this. It's been a little while. Estimated time to completion, approximately three hours. Aw, oh, shucks. Is that it? I just have to back out? Alright, sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, this might be what I want. Or not. It's a little difficult to tell what I can zoom in on, but it's fine. Everything's fine. That's my answering machine thing, I guess. Good morning, Mr. Blackwood. You have two messages. Hello there, Neon Wave. Welcome to the stream. Let's listen to our first message. First message. Just calling to say thanks for the Thai food last night. Sorry I had to leave so early, but this story is the biggest break of my career. I think you'll be able to catch me on your environment system. I'll call you later. Bye. Second message. Second message. <clears throat> Good morning, Agent 5. I sincerely hope the reason you're not answering your phone is because you're already on the way to TSA. You've already been late to work twice this week. I need you here on time for a change. To relieve Agent 3 for the alien procession. Don't disappoint me. <laughs> I love that guy. <laughs> He's my favorite. Um... Oh yeah, this thing, it's like impossible to find. It's no wonder why I didn't notice it. Oops, I actually have to drag it into my inventory, I think. Don't I? Yeah. I have my card key ring, which is gonna be like everything for the entire game. <clears throat> and micro slice, holding E and pressing the lowest button on my food repli uh, replicator. Um, 
will spawn a cornbread instead of the usual glass. Click on the cornbread. Okay, I'm gonna need to buy, find my food replicator in... Oh, this might even be it, actually. Can I... Yeah, okay. Good morning, Mr. Blackwood. Please make a selection. How the hell do I make a selection? What about... Oh, okay. So I'll hold E and press that. Synthesizing electrolyte proteinum and nutrient number four. Share and enjoy. Now I got an orange beverage. Unless I change the key bindings or something. Holding E didn't do anything for me. But I'll take this. Did it. So I don't know if there's something else I needed to hold, but that didn't seem to do anything for me. Can I re-click? I think I might be out of luck on that one. Yeah, holding E didn't do anything. As per your diet, Cafe Borgia is not a viable option. Okay, oh well. <clears throat> didn't work. Uh, so... Did I remap E? I probably did, and I don't know what E was supposed to be. Um, anything else? Put the glass back? Is that an option? I always remember that it just disappears once I lose it. I don't know if I can put the glass... Oh, oh, oh. Oh, and now I can respawn it. Alright, well, if you're interested, um, I don't know what E is supposed to be. So I definitely remapped something. Um, micro slice. what was it supposed to be? Like, what was E supposed to be? My action button? Or, or what? Because this, this is the list of controls. There's not much to work with here. Anyway, I'm going to close this and go back to uh, gameplay, but I don't know what the E button was. But oh well, I'm just going to do something else in the meantime. <clears throat> so... I guess I could enter a different room. We'll back off. Oh, E is the Easter egg key? Uh... Oh well, then. I don't even know what that means. Uh... Didn't work for me. Um... Okay, so... Now that I am in the bathroom... It spins. Aliens land the capital. At precisely 6 a.m. West Coast time, a Cerulean space vehicle entered Earth's atmosphere and landed on the lawn in front of Caldoria's capital building. Although the city square is being kept clear for the ceremony, crowds of onlookers have formed on the fringes, eager to catch a glimpse of the Cerulean ambassador as he emerges from the spacecraft to shake hands with Dr. Castillo. Symbolizing our acceptance into the symbiotry of peaceful beings and forever changing the course of human events. Stay tuned for more. Thanks, audio newspaper. Agent 5, you have nearly exceeded the optimal departure time in order to be punctual. Recommend that you leave for the TSA at once. I, I don't think that matters. I think I'm just late to start the game. Okay. I know, let's take a shower. Sonic shower. Please keep all appendages within the sterilization ring. Appendages. Sterilization complete. Have a nice day. All right, I'm out. What else we got? This is kick ass. Good morning, Mr. Blackwood. Stand by for health checks. That's me, that's me. Is 15%. Today's tip cut back on the Chinese takeout. Calling back to that already. Please choose a hairstyle. Ooh, I know. I'll take Geo Wave. Geo Wave. Sorry, that request is inappropriate for your current work schedule. No, it is not, my friend. I'll take Retro Thrash. Retro Thrash. Sorry, that request is inappropriate for your current work schedule. The hell it is! 
Fine, I'll take agency standard. Agency standard. Oh good, I could take that one. Fine. Uh, can I back up? Okay. There's the door. And I'll just go back through my room. Because I never actually left my room. <laughs> Look at that. Despite being late for work, I have the chronic condition of really not caring. Yeah, this is glowing red. The following is a special report from INN. I love these stock sounds. Wow, I've never seen this. Good morning, Caldoria. I'm Mark Johnson. INN has just been notified that the Symbiotry Ambassador's ship landed moments ago, and a fleet of Cyrolan ships has approached Earth and is now in geosynchronous orbit over Caldoria. Our reporter, Megan Love, is live on the scene at the Capitol building where the alien procession is scheduled to take place. Megan, can you describe what's going on down there? Thank you, Mark. Oh, it's There's her. a tremendous crowd on hand to witness this historic event, and the atmosphere can only be described as electric. As most of our watchers know, it was in 2308, just three years after the World Unification Accords held in Gorbistan, that Earth was visited by a race of aliens who <laughs> called themselves the Sirolans. They told us that they were here to invite us into an alliance which they called the Symbiotry of Peaceful Beings. They told the world that the purpose of this alliance is simply to share knowledge and culture with other alien races. They then left after saying they would give us exactly 10 years to deliberate their proposal. Today is the day of their return and all along the streets the people of Keldoria are waiting for the gates to open so they can catch a glimpse of the Sorolan delegate from the Capitol lawn. We will keep you informed with up-to-the-minute reports about this historic event. For the Interactive News Network, I'm Megan Love. I really can't talk over this stuff because there's no subs. Report from INN. Pia Neon Wave News Actor. Hello, I'm an acting, you news anchor. All right, and now we're back to this. I'll just back out of the environmental. You change your audio and visual selections at any time. Yeah, I want to back out. And micro slice, maybe hold the cursor over the button, press E. I'll try it. I'll see if that makes a difference. Otherwise, uh, I've done, I think, about every interesting thing there is to do in the apartment. I love that effect. It reminds me of Mist, where stuff just morphs into and out of uh, stuff, really. Spaceship. Uh, okay, so I'll approach the the replicator one more time. Good morning, Mr. Blackwood. Please make a selection. Yeah, I'll hold the cursor and press E. Right click. I I, I don't know if right clicking does anything different, but I did it. Oh, there you go. Hey, thanks, buddy. Look at that. It's cornbread. I'm taking this. What the? What? What the? I'm thinking. Joyride. What? I I will say I did not expect that. What the? What the? Sinclair says I'm sorry, but that painting just sucks. So then he says you get okay, <laughs> floating uh wherever. Word I've said. Whoa! Do you remember the smooth, sultry voice? It's me, Arthur! The Robin to your Batman! The Jekyll to your... Uh, heckle. The thing to your... thing. There's a different AI? What, is he just here now? Did I just replace the AI? Hello there, Red Buckley. Welcome to the stream. But what the... Gay 
remember the smooth, sultry voice? It's me. Yeah, I heard. But whoa. So what does this mean? I could go oh, back. Shut up. What? Really? Wow. I just have a different AI now. I'm okay. So this game is gonna be entirely different. Cause I'm, I'm just, I'm more used to like that AI woman going like, you are getting late for work. This is bizarre. Wow, you got me, Micro Slice. I certainly did not expect that. Damn. Okay. All right. Guess I'm leaving the apartment. Guess I'm getting the hell out of here. My God. Oh, wait, I just went back into the bathroom again. Because you see, I am a genius. I should be going way over there, I believe. I think. Yeah, there we go. I'm out. And this music is pretty great, by the way. Yeah, listen to that. Delightful. I love stuff like that. Atmosphere, ladies and gentlemen. Atmosphere. Anyway, let's take ourselves an elevator. Mm, call it a hunch, but I don't think we're getting in. This is... So is the whole game just going to be, like, narrated by a different AI? This is nuts. Uh, let's call the elevator. Somebody's hitting the roof, and I have to wait. Fourth floor. Now, I could go to the roof, but I won't because it's locked anyway. Oh, by the way, the reason everybody is so cavalier about aliens is that it's the year 2318. You can see on the top left. We're, we're, we're just there. We made it. Floor. First floor. All right. I can't believe it's just words of wisdom. Has that ever fooled anyone? <laughs> Jeez. All right. So. Just that attitude. Alright, then I guess I'm going that way, huh? <laughs> Tracking eye movements, I guess. These stock sounds are the best. Enhance. Wait. Arthur the all knowing is seeing your future. Yeah. I guess there's nothing to click here. It's just cool that I could see this. Alright. I have to turn around. Oh. More spaceships. All right. I forgot exactly where I like how I get to where I'm supposed to be going. Like, I know it's not hard. I watch it be just right off of that thing, too. It probably is just off of this little 
exit area. Oh, there it is. Yep, that's it. It's like this stuff. Ooh, I can take a look at this. A kiosk. Look at that. Welcome to the Caldoria Heights Apartments, with the best view of the world's first floating metropolis. While here, feel free to visit our rooftop observatory. Located directly across from the Capitol building in Sector 3, Caldoria Heights plays to a number of luxurious accommodations. Our 15 units offer ample living space and the very best views of the city. Aluminized steel plumbing and titanium bathroom fixtures are standard. And topping off this list of distinctive features is a high-res 4D environ system built into each and every living room. Designed for metro properties by Marco Giappetti, Calderia Heights offers comfortable accommodations in an attractive environment. Thank you. I love the little effects though. That's great. All right, let's actually take the transporter. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. Animations! They really must have put a lot of effort into this though for real, especially for the 90s. I know there's an updated version of the game, but damn. Oh my god, that sounded like doom sound. Please insert your global transport card now. I'll do just that. So this is a thing where I can open my inventory. I, I only have one active item. But at this point, I only have the one item, so I'll use my card. See, and it changes the uh, picture when I can actually use it. So, choose a destination. I'll choose a destination. Hi, kids, we're home early. Um, I guess I'm really just supposed to go to. Oh, let's go to Flagstaff Beach, Arizona. Recording destination transport. Wait, really? Recording passengers organic substratum. Wait, they're actually going to take me there? I didn't think I could... I didn't just game over myself, did I? Like, wrong location. Ooh, I'm going to get fired for this. I didn't think I was allowed to even click that. Uh... Did I, did I game over myself? Oh my god, that game over! It's, you're supposed to be responsible, idiot. Alright, I'll continue. I genuinely did not realize that that was just a game over screen. God, I feel like a saved game. We could use a little adventure. Okay, that's very amusing. I, I did not know that that was an option. Choose a destination. What the hell is other? Other destinations have not been pre-programmed. Sorry, let's just do the TSA. Sorry. Please hold for tracking and sterilization process. Foreign element eliminated. Jeez. Preparing destination transporter. Recording passengers organic substratum. Prepare for molecular disintegration. Prepare. neon wave wire teleporters or wire cars around if teleporters are uh, I'm gonna go ahead and say because you would need teleporters absolutely everywhere to have them work like if I wanted to go like three feet away from me like how would I do that I would need a, a second teleporter uh, anyway let's get out of here <laughs> That's kind of cool. <clears throat> Call it a hunch, but I don't think we're getting in. The hell we aren't. Please hold for ID check. Scanning. Verification of central cortex scan. Scanning for biotech implant. Identification confirmed. Welcome, Agent 5. Your fourth late arrival has been verified and logged. <laughs> Damn it. 
help me if I miss the first human encounter with alien beings. <laughs> that is very annoying on my part. I apologize. Interesting music. That's fantastic. Oh, damn it. This is the thing. It's very easy to uh, accidentally skip. All I did was press left to turn left. That's that's why it's annoying. Although, actually, I've never done this before. Dr. Candace White, inventor of the first morphing smart alloys. Throughout the history of time, humans have attempted to explore every new frontier before them. The mysteries of land, sea, and space have already unraveled before us. Now that matter reintegration is a reality, humankind can truly explore the most infinite frontier. The micro-world of molecules that make up the universe. <laughs> she looked back up. I didn't think I would ever see a head bigger than mine. Hey! I've never seen this stuff before. Dr. Enrique Castillo, Earth's first ambassador to the symbiotry of peaceful beings. As we have struggled on Earth to blind our eyes to the differences that have separated us in the past, so must we now, as a unified people, acknowledge and welcome the differences of races from planets other than our own. Nothing? All right. Dr. Elisa Crenshaw, inventor of the first faster-than-light drive. Equipped with a faster-than-light drive, humans can once again unfurl their sails and navigate a new and endless black sea by the light of billions and billions of bright stars. Okay. Hello there, Rich Toto. Welcome to the stream. And three more. Roberto Jimenez, first unified Earth president. The role of government is to protect the innocent and promote peace. With this new unified world, the Earth stands on the verge of a peace that will forever change the face of you. It really amuses me that they go back to looking up. Like, it's like the camera's panning down, but clearly it's just the actors looking up. <laughs> oh, did I overshoot? Maybe not. Excuse me, I want to get to the, the middle. Okay, I guess that's it. Dr. Seiji Matsumoto, inventor of the cybernetic cortical matrix. The design of the cortical matrix was based on a neural net of the human brain. Like children, these constructed beings will evolve and grow, and from them we must also learn. All right, and finally, right? Dr. Elliot Sinclair, inventor of the first time travel device. The invention of time travel may in the future save humanity by teaching the world to avoid the tragic mistakes of the past. Okay. All right, we did it, everybody. We did it. I'll actually, I'll actually go ahead and resave. Moving on. The command center, everybody. The command center. Stock Doom sound. Oh, that's so cool. And very obnoxiously, I have to go all the way around to get to, like, where I sit down. And now for the best actor in the game. 
So you finally decided to make it into work. And only 32 minutes late this time. Obviously, you think TSA rules do not apply to you. Well, you are wrong. <laughs> As of now, you're grounded. One week of review and data cleanup work in the command center. And you can start by reviewing TSA agent procedures, which you've obviously forgotten. I freaking love this guy. Well, you were wrong. All right, all right. This You're not great. one of those people who doesn't like to read directions, are you? You better watch your mouth, Arthur. Okay? Okay? You're on thin ice, buddy. Anyway, let's get a load of... We have theory, procedure, background. Let's get basic background first. Critical accelerating space-time transfer yeah, V1, otherwise known as Pegasus, was the brainchild of part-time historian and full-time physicist Dr. Elliot Sinclair. In 2311, after seeing Sinclair's time-bending experiments, the government contracted him to build a full-scale operational time machine. The purpose of this device was to explore our past, as well as to discover the truth behind many disputed historical events. Just four years after the project was begun, the world's first time machine underwent its first test run. However, due to mounting concerns by individuals who believed that the machine would be used not only to explore history, but also to alter it. The test run would be the first and last time that the machine would be used for research purposes. The project was discontinued, and Sinclair was forbidden to ever work on time distortion projects again. Time travel, now a reality, the government secretly set up the Temporal Security Annex as a means to safeguard history from potential sabotage. You, the members of the Temporal Protectorate, are among the very few who know of its existence. Okay, that's important information. And yeah, Microslice diegetic tutorials. You've clearly shirked your duty, so go through the tutorial stuff. Like, that is something that a real job would do. Um, eh, theory. It seems like a logical step from background. The simplest analogy for the theory of time travel is that of a tunnel in time. When someone travels through time, a tunnel is created, which originates when the travel is begun and ends when the traveler lands. If some event in the past is altered, the theory states a rip occurs in the fabric of time, which gives rise to a temporal chain reaction. This chain reaction takes the form of a reality distortion wave. It could take anywhere from a few seconds to several hours to reach the present. Of those who aren't uncreated when the distortion wave hits, many will suddenly have a new life, and the past as we know it will cease to exist. Traveling back in time before the distortion wave hits allows an agent to jump over the distortion wave and escape its effects. As a member of the Temporal Protectorate, you alone will have the ability to jump back in time and prevent the corruption from ever happening. To ensure that it doesn't happen again, you'll have to discover the source of this disruption and bring it to a halt. One main caution exists. When time jumping, never allow the energy level that sustains the temporal link between yourself and the Pegasus device to be depleted. For integrity failure of this conduit will end any possibility of returning to the present. <laughs> what a nightmare. And now procedure. In the event that it becomes necessary to restore the proper course of history, the procedure is as follows. As quickly as possible, get to the ready room and retrieve your assigned mapping and Pegasus biochips and the journeyman key from their storage containers. The Pegasus biochip is your link to Pegasus. It is what allows you to be pulled back to the present at the touch of a button. Next, enter the biosupport suit generator. The biosupport suit is an indispensable element of the time travel process and is essential for your protection. After you're outfitted for travel and before the reality distortion wave reaches the present, you must jump to the year 200 million BC. Upon arriving, use the journeyman key to open the storage vault and obtain the journeyman historical log. Since it exists at a point in time previous to any likely temporal changes, this disk serves as a source of unaltered historical information. To discover how history has been changed, return to the temporal security annex and insert the journeyman disk into the computer. It will be cross-referenced with the historical log which was left behind and altered by the reality distortion wave. Knowing how, when, 
and where the past was changed should give you the information you need to restore the proper flow of history. A word of caution. Time is very sensitive to change. In order to keep from altering history further, try to solve the problems you encounter without changing anything. <laughs> As a rule, a temporal protectorate agent should never interfere with any events of the past. Never leave anything behind that came from a different time. Never remove any historically significant objects from an environment. And above all, an agent should never interact with beings from another time zone. Okay, I learned my lesson. What? Immediately. Dear God, it's finally happened. And with you of all people on duty, Gage, this is it. <laughs> it all depends on you. Get to the ready room. Let's do it. God, this guy is way too good. All right, get to the ready room. So where's the anomaly? Do I just... All right, got it. Do I just back up? Okay, I just back up. All right. This is a real problem, a temporal anomaly. That's like, that's horrifying. And with you of all people on duty, my, my boss does not care very much for me, but he's so funny. You thought that the rules didn't apply to you. Well, you were wrong. All right. Am I allowed to loop all the way around? No, I gotta take the long way around. What an inconveniently built place, even though it looks awesome. Let's go to the ready room. Is this the ready room? Yeah, okay. Well, micro slice, I could wait around to see what happens, but I think I have to just straight up wait for 10 minutes, and I'm not doing that. I'm in, but once again, ludicrously inconvenient. Uh, like, you walk right into a bar. Like, get the hell out of here. <laughs> Historical log access key not detected. Access denied. Well, I tried. Chips. Temporal rip emergency confirmed. Access authorized for Agent 5G Blackwood. Preparation complete for mapping biochip. Pegasus biochip. This animation is gorgeous. <laughs> These sounds. These are wonderful toys. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Okay. So if I check out my biochips, I have a few now. Can I, like, select them? I forgot there's a way to do that. But whatever, I got my stuff. Because there are different ones I can... Or maybe they're just active... No, there, there are ones I can select, I'm pretty sure. Oops, I overshot it by one. Historical log access key. Temporal rip emergency confirmed. Initiating protocol. Access authorized for Agent 5 G Blackwood. Alright, this I can get. Hey, now that's nice. Birthday present? Uh -huh. I can't believe they had two entire scripts of different AIs for this game. But here's my key, which is everything, actually. It's very important. And now let's try that center tube again, please. Temporal rip emergency mission in progress. Pegasus access authorization confirmed for Agent 5G Blackwood. Repair for biosuit encapsulation. Ultrasonic body type assessment. Mesomorphic. 
and for scanning exact body dimensions. Please keep hands inside turbo lift. Yeah, definitely keep your hands inside this. And we're down. Look at that. Oh, I just go. This is pretty gorgeous. Hey, look, stock walking on great sound. Really? All right, you know what? I feel that this shouldn't be as uh, difficult as it is. There's only, like, one way it'll allow me to go. <laughs> so I'm just gonna bonk until I figure it out. Unless I click on the door, I'll feel... Okay, how, how the hell did I miss that for that long? Anyway. Let's start the game for real. attempt to leave Pegasus. TSA protocol strictly mandates that the Pegasus remain sealed from all outside contact once a temporal repair mission is initiated. Remember, this protocol exists to protect the TSA agent from the effects of temporal anomalies that may have occurred in the corrupted time stream. All right, Gage. The world has only one hope, <laughs> and it's you. I pray that after the rip hits, TSA will still be here for you to transport back to. Good luck. Yeah, that is genuinely scary. Like, everything might change if I mess around with the past. You must immediately activate Pegasus before the approaching temporal distortion wave reaches the present. You will be traveling back to the year 200 million BC. <laughs> oh my god. To recover the journeyman historical log. After obtaining the disk, you will initiate your auto-recall function, returning you to the Pegasus. Once you have returned, you must compare the corrupted and uncorrupted histories of the planet and determine the most likely origins of the distortions. Here goes. What'd she say? 200 million BC? Temporal distance is quite a bit. Oh yeah, like 1999997682 BC, yikes. Here we go. 88, well, 884,623.9 terajoules. Let's go. I don't know if I want to try that thing. The whole space time continuum concept is actually quite simple. You see, Gage, space and time are actually just floating along in a big lava lamp. What? What? Anyway, we're here. Hi. Uh, let's save, actually. So yeah, this game uh, wild enough for you yet? We're, we're just here. I can go forward. Warning. You are currently 124 meters above the rocky shoreline below. Please exercise appropriate caution and dexterity. <laughs> Dead. <laughs> Whoops. How did that happen? As you plummeted to your death, the last thought to go through your mind was that you should have paid more attention to the AI warning. <laughs> what a dumbass. All right. Anyway. The space-time continuum concept is actually quite simple. Okay, that's enough out of you. So, yeah, yeah. What did she just say? Yeah. Sorry, Winterburn. I blew it. I shouldn't have done that. It's an achievement to do all the cliff jumps. It's a riot. Gog, I don't think, has achievements in its version, though, but that's actually fantastic. 
Oops, I bonked the wall. Ooh. Why, hello. Go on. Pull my lever, punk. Very funny. Very, very funny 300-year-old reference to make. Let's take a look outside. Actually legitimate advice. Did that just undo it, or...? Anyway, we're good. Okay. Back on out. What the... Oh, my flashlight went off. That makes sense. Hopefully I'm doing this right. Jeez. Ugh. I feel... I feel... I feel like... yodeling! Warning. You are currently 124 meters above the rocky shoreline below. Please exercise appropriate caution and dexterity. Yeah, thanks. Uh, also, while I'm here, a little fun thing for you. I'm going the wrong way right now. Currently detecting more biorhythms from a rather large reptilian life form. Caution is advised. Hello there, Ross. Welcome to the stream. I'm exploring a dino cave because it's awesome. And I guess I'm trapped. Can I click ahead? Nope, sorry. Alright. Oh, place hey. This gives me the creeps. No, it doesn't. They're eggs. I want them. Oh my god! <laughs> the Hypsilophodon didn't know of your mission here. She only knew that your soft flesh would make a perfect meal for your hatch or her hatchlings. Yikes. Let's restore my file. Can't believe that happened. Anyway, I'm going this way. You know, I'd be willing to bet that's where they stash their loot. Place hand on scanner for ID verification. And the lever I pulled in the cave powered this thing on. Otherwise, this would just be a dead end and I could walk off the cliff and die. That is freaking cool. That is so cool. Well, you can try it if you want. Just let me off here. <laughs> so cool. We're probably gonna need a key. Yep. Cut chunk. looking I'm sure it's right under your nose well I mean look it's like the thing a chunk agent five you have accomplished your mission and recovered the journeyman historical log you must now return quickly to the temporal security annex and review the disc yeah and also again how do I select the damn ships do I just click it I forgot how this works it's not tab yeah, no. I? Object analysis, which is actually cool, but... How do I... How do I biochip? Oh. P pauses. I don't think I even knew that. Oh, there we go. I can arrow key. Alright, so yeah. Artificial intelligence. A for Arthur, which is amazing. Uh, artificial intelligence, mission briefing, and environment scan and hints. We have Pegasus biochip, which I'm going to use. And then the map, which actually does not work on this particular mission. So, and in fact, the map usually doesn't work, but the one time I can think of when it does, it's invaluable. So, Pegasus. Select it. Right? Yeah. And let's recall, because we're done. doing 
enjoy riding in the Pegasus. Your research reconnaissance mission was not scheduled until... Wait a minute, what's that uniform you're wearing? What's that look on your face? You have a lot of questions to answer, soldier. Once you have finished logging your report in the command center, I want to see you in my office immediately. Get Colonel Baldwin now, and he called me soldier. So clearly something is different. So this actually makes me nervous. Uh, let's exit. Everything has changed. This is legitimately uncomfortable. So we're going to step on out of here. That part's easy. And then we got to find the elevator, which is harder than it should be. Nope, there it is. I did it. I did it first try every time, everybody. First try every time. So easy. Let's let's go. Let's go. Uh, Neon Wave. I wonder if Baldwin is evil. Well, he is now. He wasn't before. <laughs> like, something changed. That's what makes this difficult. It's like, he's just a different character now, <laughs> which is very scary. Okay, I gotta go around that stupid column. It's so annoying. Alright. Okay, and that was the ready room. Alright. Let's go to the command center. He told us, right? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I gotta put in my log. Didn't go around enough. Sorry. Oh, micro slice. Check the heads. I didn't even think about that. I'll do it real quick. I don't think it's worth points if I do it, but I'll, I'll give it a shot, right? Why not? I do remember, though, that we are getting ready for a bunch of exposition. I'll check the heads, but we'll find out if anything's changed. And once I'm done with the exposition, it's probably going to be where I end the stream. Dr. Candace White, inventor of the first morphing smart alloys. Throughout the history of time, Humans have attempted to explore every new frontier before them. Yeah, no, no. Of land, sea, and space I, I can't skip this, but it's the same. Now that now Good question, though. I guess the only person who changed is Baldwin for no reason, which is actually kind of funny. The micro world of molecules that make up the universe. <laughs> Slowly look up. My, my, my take is done. Okay, we're done. Oh. Can I... Great. Now we're getting somewhere. Oh I, oh, I think he might have just repeated the head that's bigger than mine. Whatever. Alright, so back into the command center where we are definitely going to get blasted with exposition. But it's also the premise for the whole game. The stakes are high. Very, very high. Get in there. Console on. Now here's the big part, right? The log disk. Check for temporal discrepancy. I was just gonna read that aloud, but they said it. So we got four: the NORAD Six Defense Complex, Mid Atlantic. Morimoto Colony, Coprates Minor, Mars, Caldoria Airborne Metropolis, North America, World Science Center, Sydney, Australia. And the dates are a couple hundred years apart. They're, they're wildly different. So let's check them out in order. NORAD, chance of success based on historical relevance, 23%. Yikes. So, chat, I have a question for you. Would you like me to view the unaltered history that should happen first? and the altered bad version second, or the other way around. We could either see what we have and what we risk losing, or the problem and what we'll get if we fix it. So well, what's your take on this? And I am going to do this for four different things. I mean, I'll take an answer once, 
and I'll just do that for the all four, but we're going to be watching eight videos. <laughs> I have a vote for original first. Another one for original first. Okay. And I see flip a coin. I don't have a coin. I appreciate that, though. Altered first. But so far, it's two to one. I got heads. <laughs> Whatever. Unaltered, unaltered. All right. Okay. Let's view good version of NORAD. May 15, 2112. The government of Gorbistan appears ready to agree to the terms of the Worldwide Unification Treaty being set forth by the United Nations. However, at least one terrorist faction disagrees with the terms of the plan and has expressed this disagreement by taking hostages. Nevertheless, it appears that the Worldwide Unification Treaty will be signed by Gorbistan and all other nations of the world. Hooray! Hooray! But wait. What if we alter the... Yeah, it's passed. Just 200 years ago. 5, 15, 21, 12, 1400 hours. Today, amid negotiations to work out the final details of the Worldwide Unification Treaty, a nuclear missile was launched by the United States toward the country of Gorbistan. The missile, however, self-destructed before actually touching down. Before the scare, the leaders of this country appear to be ready to accept the terms of the peace plan. Although the U.S. officials have repeatedly stated that they don't understand how the missile could have been launched, other foreign governments have already said that they cannot possibly sign a treaty with a country that would use such scare tactics. Thus, the worldwide unification treaty which has come so close to realization now has little or no chance for ratification. That sucks. Well, there's no red. What about Mars? Unaltered. August 3rd, 2185. Early today, the pilot of a cargo shuttle approaching the Morimoto Mars colony spotted an unidentified spacecraft in orbit over the colony. The sighting was verified by landing base scanners and immediately reported to Earth. Soon after, the ship sped off towards the outer reaches of the solar system. This first governmentally verified encounter with an alien race has already prompted the leaders of the world to start emergency closed door meetings to discuss the implications of this monumental event. Hello there, JBog. Welcome to the stream. Yeah, have I been unmade? Uh, almost. I got eaten by a damn dinosaur. 8-3-21-85. Oh, 800 hours. Morimoto Corporation's Mars Colony Project suddenly went offline last night, just moments after the pilot of a cargo shuttle spotted an unidentified spacecraft in the area. While it is still unclear what has happened, many believe that the colony may have been destroyed by a malevolent alien race. Repeated efforts to contact the colony have met with no success, but before the comm link to the colony was terminated, the sighting of alien spacecraft its rapid departure and a subsequent unexplained explosion were recorded by long-range sensors on Phobos and verified by Earth authorities. Okay, this... this all sucks. Uh, what about Caldoria? Oh, I didn't even read this. Uh, chance of success is 57%. Um, affected event, not an actual source. Well, yeah, that's present day. It's right here. Let's hear how bad it was today. Well, first is the good part. a century after the first confirmed sighting of a UFO, aliens have finally made contact with Earth. Early this morning, a huge triangular-shaped vehicle entered into Earth's orbit. After three hours, the spacecraft came through the atmosphere and hovered over Caldoria. Moments later, the following message was transmitted over all communication frequencies. Yeah. 
And as suddenly as they had appeared, the Sirolans departed, leaving Earth to ponder the implications of their existence and their incredible proposal. Now, hello there, Alex. Welcome to the stream. And yeah, as the chat pointed out and the vlog just pointed out, uh, that this was 10 years ago. So today, today is when we would actually make contact with the aliens. But it looks like that might not happen here. Today, 123 years after the first official UFO encounter, an alien spacecraft entered into Earth's orbit. After several hours of silence and mounting tension, the aliens transmitted the following message over all communication frequencies. While no one is quite sure what this message means, many leaders have voiced concern about interacting with an obviously powerful and potentially dangerous alien race. Ugh, not good. Ruining everything. And then the World Science Center, chance of success, 48%. Good side. January 17, 2310. The Symposium on Alien Contact began today at the World Science Center in New Sydney, Australia. The debate centered around whether humans are ready for interaction with alien races. One speaker, Dr. Enrique Castillo, had a particularly moving speech. Dr. Castillo embarrassed the naysayers by systematically shooting down their arguments and thrilled the attending scientific community with visions of medical and technological advances which could be gained by such interaction. Although there were strong keynote speeches on both sides of the argument, most of those in attendance appeared to be in favor of alien contact. And I think we know where it's going if we go the other way. 1, 17, 23, 10, 1800 hours. Dr. Enrique Castillo, a well-known biologist and advocate for establishing alien relations was murdered earlier today. During his speech at the Symposium on Alien Contact in New Sydney, Australia, Castillo was speaking on stage at the World Science Center when the single shot from an unknown assailant Damn. was fired. He was later pronounced dead on arrival at the Darling Harbor Medical Complex. The murderer is still at large. Dr. Castillo was the most outspoken at the debates and firmly believed that contact with alien races would be beneficial to humanity. Although his views were not mainstream, Dr. Castillo's contributions to the pro-alien movement will be greatly missed. That sucks. Oh, it just takes us out. After I was alerted that you had the historical log, I began monitoring your actions. I just downloaded the information regarding the temporal distortions. I still can't believe it has really happened. I'm reviewing all of the information about this matter, but it's obvious I can't risk sending you back to change things now. My life and the only world I have ever known is at stake, and, and no one, no matter what the regulations say, is going to change it, for better or worse. As of this moment, consider yourself a hostile enemy of the state. <laughs> Damn! I'm sending robots one and two to guard the command center door until I can figure out how to dispose of you. I'm sorry, Agent Five. But once I destroy the historical log you brought back from the prehistoric sites, the only memories of your world will be in your head. And that's where they're going to stay. Brutal. So ironically, we disobeyed his orders because we obeyed his orders. auto-activation of Contingency Program 13, which states, Any attempt to obstruct a TSA agent while on a mission is a direct violation of TSA Regulation 11. Override code implemented. Attempting to establish link with Command Central Computer Core. I.O. link established. Agent 5, you may now utilize the TSA Central Computer. Good. And hello, Drake. Hello, just welcome to the stream. New target acquired. Rerouting robots. Yeah, that's not good. If I leave this room, I'm dead. However, this is extremely easy. New target acquired. Rerouting robots. Did it, they're gone. Bye. Rerouting robots. Nice work, Gage. Is that it? Do I just back out? Okay. It's very easy. So, let's get the hell out of here. 
And once I enter the uh, the next location, I'll end the stream. Are you kidding me? It took me right back in. No, I can't leave work. I want to leave work. Let me out. I'll press left once. There we go. There we go. Better. Boom, we're out of here. Oh, look at this hallway. Completely devoid of killer robots that consider me a hostile enemy of the state that's terrifying. And Winterburn, regarding um, wouldn't it be cool if there were like judgment calls we have to make on whether we should change time? Even though it just so happens that everything in this game that's changing is bad, I think we're about the preservation of the timeline. <laughs> Fortunately, the moral dilemma doesn't come up. <clears throat> oh, right, I gotta go backwards to go in. Access authorized for Agent 5G. Hello there, Cat Sith. Welcome Bite to the stream. Detected. Suit already in place. Please keep hands inside turbo lift. Whoa. I see you have a tight fitting suit. I sure do, Arthur. I sure do. Alright, let's go. Stock Deus Ex walking on metal sounds. Hey, look, everybody. For first, okay. First try every time. sure we can figure something out. I will give you anything. According to TSA Regulation 11, all communication and data links to the outside must be severed to prevent possible obstructions from hindering the completion of the mission. Now proceeding with the I.O. isolation procedures. Take that, Baldwin, even though I like you. Time-bending preparations complete. You may now choose your temporal destination. You hear that, chat? You may now choose. So, don't worry about the dates. Where should I... Maybe we do have to worry about the dates. If I click, it doesn't actually take me there, does it? Okay. So, chat, I have a question for you. Shall I go to NORAD 6 in the Atlantic Ocean? Shall I go to Mars? Shall I go to the World Science Center? Where's it gonna be? Uh, ignore the green date, that's where we currently are. Get your ass to Mars. Two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. <laughs> Mars. Seeing a couple Mars options. Anyone else want to weigh in? I like being upside down. What does that mean, Australia? <laughs> I see one ocean and one, I assume, Australia. I see a third Mars. It looks like we're probably getting our asses to Mars. That's okay. So I'll go there and I'll wrap up the stream when we uh, land. I do see two votes for NORAD, but Mars is still winning by quite a bit. Let's go. And don't worry, people, we are going to be jumping back and forth. It's not going to be like, enter level, beat it, next level. Like, we will have reason to go elsewhere, but we're just picking a starting point. Mars. You are about to travel to the Morimoto Mars colony during the year 2185. Analysis of the compared history records indicates that there are two events that did not occur in the correct history. The Morimoto colony should not have been destroyed, and the alien ship orbiting Mars should have been able to leave undamaged. You must ensure that these events unfold properly in order to restore the correct order of events. 
Prepare for time jump. Ooh, welcome to Doom 3. Shuttle 1 has just departed from the East Gantry. Do I play? Yes, I do. Look at that, we're on a colony. We're on a colony. Hexes. So, I'll see if Arthur has anything to say. Oh, this will be more exciting than a pair of pants full of geckos. You know what? I concur, Arthur. It will be more exciting than a pair of pants full of gecks enter the gecko. But in any case, this is where I think I am going to end the stream. Thank you much. Thank you much. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. And until next time, everyone.